Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and here on my channel we talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism while doing my makeup. The we in that sentence is of course you all in the audience and in case you have never met me this is the first time you're watching my channel. I am a queer leftist feminist atheist. I was not raised fundamentalist but I do have an intense fascination with the movement and not to toot my horn um, but I have read a lot of books about it and I've been an OG Fundy Snarker since like 2014. So while I am not the ultimate authority on the subject, I would like you all to know that I am trustworthy. <laughs> if you like this content, you want to stick around, you want to become a Genonite, please do. We have a wonderful community and many of my followers come from a Christian background or are currently Christian. So, so I want you to know that it is a safe space and we're all very nice, I promise you. Before we get going, I want to issue a couple corrections. Number one, I kept calling them Charleston Tiki Torch Nazis. It was actually the Charlottesville Tiki Torch Nazis and I apologize, the names are very similar and to be fair, I am very dumb. The other thing is I want to issue a formal apology to any Tauruses that I offended by comparing them to Mrs. Midwest. I will do better next time and I promise you, I have several friends that are Tauruses and they said it was okay. If you missed the content warning at the beginning, I will issue another one. Today's episode is all about sexual assault and it's going to be pretty upsetting. If that's something you want to avoid, turn away now. I promise you, you're not missing anything and it's not worth it just to watch my video. In case you have been living under a rock. Who are you people? Josh Duggar, the prodigal son of the Duggar Empire, was arrested on April 29th for possession of child sexual abuse images. No word on if his story is going to end similarly to the parable of the prodigal son, but. I'm going to be using several products from Trixie Cosmetics. Trixie put me on the PR list. In fact, if you just noticed me, I could probably die happy, so. Let's leave it at that. Josh Duggar will probably go away for a very long time and his family continues to have their livelihoods, mental well-being, and public reputation completely tarnished because of his horrible actions. While I understand that there is vindication for the Fundy Snark community in the knowledge that Josh might finally receive actual consequences for his predatory behavior, I advise that we all approach the situation with some caution in regards to our language. I'm not going to be making any jokes about Josh rotting in prison, nor will I be joking about him being assaulted in prison. American legal system has subjected far too many individuals convicted of nonviolent and low-grade crimes to excessive sentences, brutal conditions, and deeply inadequate support. An estimated 40% of U.S. criminals are serving time for nonviolent crimes right now. We shamefully claim the single largest population of imprisoned citizens in the entire world, an ungodly 2.3 million. And it must be noted that these systems target individuals who are poor, non-white, and mentally ill with aggressive tactics and penalties than they do of individuals not in those groups. It is my belief that joking about or wishing these things on any individual, even someone as vile as Josh Duggar, only contributes to the harm these communities receive at the hands of our legal system. It's not worth it to hold up the prison industrial complex just to take a few pointed jabs at Josh Duggar. And I also don't expect Josh to be spending any time in gen pop. Josh will most likely be placed into protective custody in a designated wing for sex offenders to ensure his safety. Meanwhile, somewhere else in the prison, somebody is serving 15 years for weed and all of them are going to be picking up trash for 10 cents an hour while the private company that owns the prison charges the state minimum wage and pockets the difference. If you want more info on Josh's original scandals from only five years ago, go ahead and check out my Duggar video, my IBLP video, and um, the one about Fundamentalism 101 because I do talk more about the structures in place that help protect Josh and people like him because the abuse in fundamentalism is basically like comorbid at this point. After Josh's most recent arrest hit the news, TLC, a part of Discovery Communications, released this statement. TLC is saddened to learn about the continued troubles involving Josh Duggar, the network said in a statement sent to People magazine. 19 Kids and Counting has not aired since 2015. TLC canceled the show on the heels of prior allegations against Josh Duggar and he has not appeared on air since then. The thing is, this is not the first or only time that TLC has known about Josh's sex abuse. They knew about it the first time back in the early 2000s and they still went ahead and produced 14 Kids and Counting. And then in 2015, when In Touch Magazine published the police reports from said 
sex abuse. TLC pulled 19 Kids and Counting from the air, so they were right about that, but like, it's just not good enough. And then, um, that was a wild time to be alive because Jim, Bob, Michelle, Jill, and Jessa all went on Fox News to try and smooth things over. Notably, Josh was not there, and they made it worse by, um, doubling down on accusing transgender people of being pedophiles, trying to say, well, technically he was under 16, so it was okay. He was just curious about girls, and he had gone in and just basically touched them over their clothes while they were sleeping. They didn't even know he had done it. You saying, how could you unfairly, in their view, compare transgendered people to child molesters, suggest they are child molesters, knowing what you know about Josh? I think that protecting young girls and not allowing young men and men in general to go into a girl's locker room is just common sense. But this, this is different because you injected child molestation into it. I think you actually said pedophile in that. And actually a pedophile is a, an adult that preys on children. Joshua was actually 14 and just turned 15 when he did what he did. And I think the legal definition is 16 and up for being an adult preying on a child. So he, so he was a child preying on a child. He was very sly, like the girls didn't catch on, you know? Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, if he catches a girl sleeping, you know, like a quick feel or whatever. And then I remember DVRing this. I don't think you can find clips of it online anywhere. TLC first tested the waters of bringing the Duggars back when they had Jill, Jessa, and Michelle star in this documentary. There was other TLC stars, but they starred in this documentary that was about sexual abuse and none of them mentioned Josh at all, which they're not obligated to, but it was just very weird that they were peering on this documentary to try and get views for TLC, but all they did was basically like just give thoughts and prayers. Of course, as soon as that was over, we learned that Josh had an Ashley Madison account, which is a website that is catered to helping people cheat on their spouses and that he had cheated on Anna with a woman who goes by the alias Danica Dillon, who works in the sex industry. At the time she had also sued Josh for for physically assaulting her and it was dismissed because I'm sure it was really hard and expensive and daunting to try and go up against the Duggars. I wonder if she could do it now since public opinion has turned, but that's just speculation. I don't know anything about laws. But since this uh, newest Josh scandal has come out, Danica actually released another statement in more detail of what Josh did to her and he had paid for $600 worth of private lap dances. And then they decided to go to a hotel room together and he immediately like threw her on the bed and started to make her do things to him that they hadn't discussed. And he was very rough and very scary with her. She has since said that she is not surprised to learn about the um, new charges because he seemed like a really terrible person when she met him. When Counting On came back on the air, it was called Jill and Jessa Counting On. And the first couple episodes were about the rest of the family coping with Josh's bad choices, as they called them. Specifically, they were referring to him cheating, not the um, unpleasant things he did to his sisters, which I will reiterate, they don't have to say anything. That's their story to tell. And I'm sure it sucks for them every single time Josh does something to have to relive all that crap again. All of them at the time were defending Josh and that's just very troubling. Counting On eventually morphed right back into 19 Kids and Counting with Jim, Bob, and Michelle being in the forefront of the show. And the show is actually very boring. And to be honest, I have not watched it since the last time I had cable, which was in 2016. Eventually we learned that Jill's husband kinda is, an antagonist of sorts to Jim Bob, and he spilled the beans that they were never paid for the show, as well as revealing that Jim Bob doesn't allow Jill to come over to the house without permission. And knowing what we know now, that seems like a blessing in disguise because guess who was allowed free reign at the big house? Josh. As of the recording of this episode, um, May 5th, TLC has not canceled Counting On yet. Should they cancel the show? Um, I think so, because the only people who are making money are Jim Bob and Michelle. And as much as I detest the second generation of Duggar's um, conservative beliefs, they still need to be able to take care of their family financially. And in those families, at least one of the spouses is working. So if they're not even making money from the show, I don't think it's really gonna affect them. It might affect their public perception, but honestly, the Duggars have a built-in fan base of these rabid evangelical Christians. I know that because they comment on my Duggar video every day. They are always going to support the Duggars no matter what. So they will, it's not like they're going to be destitute. Let's spell it together. Ready? 
D E S T I C U T E spells destitute. Hi everybody, it's me from several hours later. Um, it's currently five o'clock. We don't know if Josh got bail or not. Um, this hearing could last several days. But what we do know is that um, there was a lot of very disturbing images and videos that he had and it was described as some of the worst that they had ever seen. And I advise that you do not read any of the details because it is horrifying. Uh, of course, I will let you know what's going on, but uh, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Whew. I still stand with the things I said. I don't wish um, violence on anybody and I don't think that we should talk bad about prisoners, but um, fuck Josh and I hate him. So how many other predators have TLC tried to cover up? Turns out quite a few. I'm not gonna put on foundation cause I'm beautiful just the way I am, okay? And you're just gonna have to deal with that. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but these are the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Little People Big World. Little People Big World was a TV show about Amy and Matt Roloff. They are a couple that has dwarfism and the show chronicles their family life, businesses, and various shenanigans. They had a big farm with all kinds of cool stuff in it. They had a Western town a pirate ship, castle. They did pumpkin chunkin with a trebuchet. It was a fun show. Amy and Matt Roloff eventually got divorced and the show chronicled that. The Roloffs had four kids, Jeremy, Zach, Molly, and Jake. Jeremy Roloff and his wife, Audrey, are actually considered fundies. And um, from what I've seen, problematic. And possibly I will do an episode about them someday, but no promises. The youngest son, Jacob, released a statement recently on Instagram talking about how he was actually abused by one of the producers of the show and kept it quiet for so long because you know, it is really hard to admit that kind of stuff. It is often much easier to think about things than it is to talk about them. And so this disclosure has been delayed, but through that delay, I have found the fortitude and words. As a child, after what I realized now was a long grooming process, I was molested by an executive field producer for Little People Big World, Chris Cardamone. I do not expect to provide details of this encounter at any point publicly. I do hope he is never allowed around children again. I first began contemplating this statement when he texted me years later in November 2015. I chose to disclose it now as it remains a traumatic memory that needs to be exercised of any further power over my development. By revealing this, I may be more fully understood and my perspective on issues such as child sexual abuse, child exploitation, and the collateral cost of reality television may be perceived more clearly. Although I would have to add that this experience has not solely defined my point of view on any of these issues, nor has it defined my worldview in general. This may also serve as a reminder that the experience of sexual assault in all of its iterations can happen to anyone at any time and is a far more prevalent reality than our current social stigma allows us to talk about it. Why not speak out sooner? A child must process and I needed silence and time. I continue my own contemplation on the voyeurism involved in the entire enterprise of reality television. A massive spectacle of drama and pain and argument and invasion with little joy sprinkled over that viewers watch completely dissociated from the complex humans inside the simplistic characters they see on TV. What is the environment environment of prying eyes capable of watching someone grow up week by week on TV. Yet there is no inherent causal connection between reality television production and childhood trauma. We are still sprinting ahead with the enterprise deaf, dumb, and blind asking for forgiveness later instead of asking harder preliminary questions ourselves. The profits were indeed sweet. The actual experience was more complicated. I often ask sincerely from this complex perspective, is it simply taken as granted that we should be capable of watching someone grow up week by week on TV? How does the environment of prying eyes, both lenses, and audience affect self-perception? How are material amenities weighed against the subjective psychological effects? Has anyone defined these lines, studied it, should we need to study it? So much of reality television is simply a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. It must finally be emphasized that all fault lies with the predator and no fault lies with any of my family members. I am certain that there is a positive moment for me and another step toward a brighter future. In solidarity with silent survivors, Jacob Roloff. In response, TLC gave this statement. TLC said it had just learned of the alleged encounter that occurred years ago involving a third party connected to the production of Little People Big World. World. We are saddened and troubled by this very serious allegation and TLC will work cooperatively with the authorities. Our main focus remains on supporting the Roloff family
family during this very difficult time. Amy Roloff released a statement that was actually very nice. I love you forever and always, Jacob. I'm proud of you. Now you don't have to feel alone and carry this around anymore. His wife said, proud to know you, proud to love you, proud to be your wife. This is the most recent statement from Jacob regarding the new Josh arrest. TLC's statement of essentially, he hasn't been on air in a while, completely sidesteps the dynamic of being able to air terrible people with sometimes terrible producers for often terrible motives for buku ratings and profit and still profiting. But when the terrible of all that gets uncovered, TLC walks away with the buku profits and nothing else. Maybe a twin spinoff. They treat their own products, shows, talent, in a liability sense, as contracted out and completely detached from them and their responsibility, which may or may not be legally true, when in fact these shows were conceptualized and distributed by them. Here comes Honey Boo Boo. Here comes Honey Boo Boo is a spinoff of the TLC show Toddlers and Tiaras. The name Honey Boo Boo was an insult that her mom said to another child from what I've read on Wikipedia, and it was not actually Honey Boo Boo's um, nickname, but now it is her nickname. Her real name is Elena. Well, anyway, so Toddlers and Tiaras is a like exploitation show about um, child beauty pageants. I really think that this is a phenomenon that only happens in America because we just love to sexualize little children. It's true, but he shouldn't say it. Honey Boo Boo um, gained notoriety because her family is kind of lower class and a little bit outrageous. That's another problem we have was laughing at poor people, but I digress. October 24th, 2014, TLC canceled the series after four seasons when cast member Mama June was seen with Mark Anthony McDaniel, a man who served 10 years in prison for aggravated child molestation. This prompted Shannon to admit to Entertainment Tonight that the father of her daughter is actually um, Michael Anthony Ford, another sex offender who served time after being caught on To Catch a Predator. Ah, oh, this woman sure knows how to pick them. Yeah, double homicide. Sorry, I didn't know this, but according to Wikipedia, um, porn company Vivid Entertainment sent a letter to Mama June offering her to make a porno with Mike Thompson, the president of Vivid, stating that the studio's BBW themed productions had very popular lately, and he would make the couple's experience very enjoyable for them both. And Mama June said, I have more respect for myself and my kids and my family. It ain't happening, not even for a zillion dollars. Well, you didn't have enough respect for your kids to not uh, buy a house with a rapist, but... You know. After Honey Boo Boo was canceled, We TV picked up the show and turned it into Mama June from not to hot after she got um, bariatric surgery and lost a bunch of weight. And uh, oh God, that's just so messed up. Listen, I like trash TV just as much as the next guy. I used to religiously watch Love After Lockup. And I will admit that that show is actually very fucked up because it shows domestic violence as exciting TV drama instead of the serious situation that it is. Uh, Mama June and one of her boyfriends, I forget which one, was recently arrested for possession of drugs. So that's not good. Um, Elena is now 15 and doing okay, I think. God, mm. next one. The Willis family. Are you a good looking family or what? <laughs> Thanks, it's the, Howard. It is the polar opposite of my family, which were known around town as the Munsters. Uh, you've never seen anyone like me where you're from, have you? <laughs> Come on, wave to Uncle I'm Howie. Go The Willis family are a large, quiverful Christian family from Nashville. Um, their show seemed pretty wholesome and fun. They were on America's Got Talent and they played at the Grand Ole Opry and they're totally progressive, y'all. The girls wear pants. Nothing to see here, folks. So, turns out their dad is a piece of shit and had been sexually assaulting the daughters for years. He was finally found out when one of the daughters told their counselor and the counselor called the police. Their show was canceled, Willis went to jail, the kids got together and actually wrote an album to help them heal from their trauma. TLC's family-friendly show, The Willis Family, was hit with shocking news. The patriarch of the Willis brood, Toby, was arrested and charged with raping a minor female. Just as the group was poised to perform in front of a live audience in Kentucky, 46-year-old Toby Willis was arrested. He was charged with child rape dating back 15 years. Overnight, all public appearances were canceled. 
Mom Brenda and the 12 kids withdrew from the public eye until now, six months after their father was sentenced to 40 years in jail. Six of the 12 Willis siblings are opening up exclusively to Daily Mail's Laura Collins for the first time, with the shocking revelation that Toby's victims were his own daughters, sexually abused by their father. I was going to ask you what had stopped you from, from speaking up. What held you back? I didn't speak up is because it was like, this is so insane and crazy. Like, who's going to believe me? How are people going to deal with this? What held me back from talking, I mean, all through the years and growing up, was the unknown. I didn't know what was going to happen. And everything that I could have had as a kid could have been taken away instantly. I had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't know if I was going to have my mom and my siblings there for me. Well, I think we all held a black box in our hearts of memories, regrets, um, fears, and um, we hid them pretty deep. The horrific stories of rape first came to light when their oldest sister, Jessica, told her story to a family counselor who reported the abuse to police. The first time I was able to tell my story was after one of my sisters told her story. And it was like, wow, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one. Looking back, the older girls now wish they'd been able to speak up before their father had a chance to prey on their younger sisters. The truth is all of us at different times could have, you know, um, spoken up and said, you know, this is my truth. This is what, you know, I'm experiencing. The boys feel guilt, wishing they'd known and could have somehow rescued their family. It's been hard for me and I hear stories around me and I, I look at those people and I'm like, I can't even fathom the pain you're going through. Telling the truth about the abuse led to a creative breakthrough and a new song called Speak My Mind. If I speak my mind. People don't always have the courage to speak out, ask for help, or know what to do in a situation, so that's what this song talks about. Is there some sense of relief that you're now kind of allowed to feel all the feelings that perhaps you kind of pushed down for years? Yes, to just say, you know what, this is, this is the truth. There's gotta be more courage I can John and Kate plus eight. Exploitative by nature. Um, there's not a lot of hard evidence for abuse that happened at that home, but I do have a lot of like anecdotal stories about it. Um, I know they confused the kids by staging Christmas in the middle of summer one year for production. Allegedly, even former staff members have come out and said that they've witnessed her being very cruel. Um, allegedly, Kate sent one of her sons who being behaviorally difficult to live in a group home. I don't know much about that, so I don't want to like say too much about it. It also recently has come out that Kate is saying that John was being physically abusive to the same son that I just referenced, but his daughters are coming out and saying that he's not abusive. And once again, they're also children. So like it feels wrong to have them caught up in these crossfires. It's just a bad um, time. Um, all I can say is that I get very, very bad vibes from John and Kate Plus eight. Cake Boss. I'm just kidding. God damn it. Welcome to Plathville. Since emotional abuse isn't taken as seriously as other kinds of abuse, it's relatively easy to brush the Plath parents off as just mildly problematic. When in reality, Welcome to Plathville is a narcissistic hellscape of drama and poor boundaries. I mean, what would the producers even be able to do in this situation? How could they help the kids? Well, they could cancel the show, but that would probably mean they don't make money off advertisements. In this last week, Olivia Plath actually commented on a uh, Fundy Snark TikToker's account who was talking about The Pearls. I don't know which book, probably To Train Up a Child or Holy Sex. Um, <laughs> 
I know too much about the damn pearls. Yep, I was given this book to prepare for marriage. Ethan and I met at the pearls conference because both of our families were slash are in this cult. In conclusion, PLC, you're not exactly making Errol Morris documentaries over here, okay? I get that you can claim objectivity by saying that you just film the real lives of these individuals, but we all know that's bullshit. You choose individuals of families that will draw the eyes of a gawking public and then use teams of highly trained editors to sculpt raw footage into trash TV. Often the folks you choose to follow around are underprivileged, desperate, and struggling with a whole host of other issues that a film crew won't make any better. I'm sure that the expensive cadre of lawyers has made sure that you're legally above board and untouchable, but you should also recognize the moral obligation you have to these people. Profit off of their labor, whether or not you see it that way. You have built your brand on the lives of their emotions and you owe it to them to make sure that they're safe and cared for. Maintaining fair pay structures, stepping in when abuse is witnessed, and properly vetting your staff to make sure you aren't hiring predators is the fucking bare minimum of what you should be doing. And this isn't just TLC either. MTV also has a similar track record of simultaneously exploiting and neglecting the stars of their own reality TV programs. Cases like that of Janelle Evans of Teen Mom highlight that MTV is just as happy to allow abuse to fester while the cameras roll if it keeps the public engaged and the advertisers happy. If we're being honest with ourselves, any network that features minors in prominent reality TV roles is at least passively complicit in the exploitation of child labor. We need to support the cast of these shows when they speak out of their mistreatment or abuse. We need to respect the privacy of participants in their personal lives, even in the age of social media. And we do have to remember to be mindful of how we speak about children on these shows because they didn't choose to be there. If you enjoyed this video, remember to consensually smash that like and subscribe button. I do have merch available and I am working on a new design for next week um, and I think you're going to love it. But I do have um, Overweight Sexually Broken Loser, the Funny Fridays logo, Idle Hands or the Devil's Fleshlights. I do have a tote bag that says Picnics Are My Love Language, which is a reference to the uh, Plath video. I have Patreon if you want to support me financially. I will be making a second Duggars video later on in this year, but I would like to get the full picture of what's going on with Josh, find out what his sentencing is, um, any other details like that we'll definitely talk about. And I will say that um, when a new video comes out, um, YouTube has an automatic captioning service and it takes a couple hours for it to kick in. And then once it kicks in, I can go in and edit the spelling mistakes. But that's how I caption videos right now. They've removed community captions, um, which is great. So I apologize if you are hard of hearing and you don't get to have captions for the first couple hours. I know that really sucks and I'm sorry, but I'm working on it. I love you all. Be kind to each other and have a very blessed day. What's up? How do you pronounce C-A-D-R-E? Cadre. Cadre? Yeah. Cadre, okay.